Okay. All right, folks, we're live here on Herb FM Sports Radio on speaker.com tonight and also on uh, on uh, StreamYard. I'm Chris Lydell. You can see you can follow us at Herb FM Radio, the Twitter handle. And uh, Ewan McCreep is in uh, Charlotte. Looks beautiful there in Charlotte today. So did you go out and play any uh, golf today, or you just relaxed? <laughs> oh goodness, Herbie! Uh, ugly buddy. Uh, yes, uh, that would be just relaxed. Did a little lawn work, pal. You can you know? hear me? Yeah, yeah can you hear me? Oh, you know what I do? All right, can you hear me now? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, can you? Yeah, I actually <laughs> blocked my video, my audio. <laughs> Okay. Are we yeah, so tonight on the show, sorry, we're trying to you can see you want to see the backdrop what I just did? Did I yeah, that's it? Oh sweet. I can already set the Seminole jersey. The flag and then I got the uh, Wake Forest jersey right there. For like a I got it for like five bucks and I got the uh, the the Clemson one for five bucks. Yeah. And I got I had to put Ray Ooh. Lewis in the middle because Ray Lewis is a you know a still a hurricane, so yeah, I know he's a Raven. So, anyway, All right, let's start the, Herbie, if we can officially start the show, why don't you welcome everyone and give us? Uh, yeah. You know. yeah, well, welcome everybody tonight here on the show, and uh, so let's give you uh, who's going to be on tonight. Uh, Jerry Ratcliffe from JerryRatcliffe.com will be joining us at seven oh eight. Then Mike Burnup will be joining us at seven fifteen. Uh, the analyst for Virginia Tech football and basketball. And then Pete Cohen, who is going to be joining us, who is the analyst for Boston College football at 7.30. And then we'll wrap up the show at 7.45 with George Bashira, who is from Shakedown Thunder Sports. So uh, that's our our lineup tonight. So we're waiting for Jerry to log in here. So so you and uh, any exciting news today that you hear anything in, in your travels that you want to talk about? Uh, well, you know, obviously the big story down here is why Cam Newton hasn't signed with the team, Herb. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's really – I would have thought he would have signed by now. And In fact, recently he came out and said that he'd be open to being a backup. Um, but, you know, this guy's a competitor. He's been hurt. Uh, I, I hope – I know he'll get a chance, but – Honestly, Herbie, that's really all the talk down here. I mean, I, you know, everything else, everybody else in the country is going through the same thing. But where is Cam going to play is a huge point of uh, emphasis down here in Charlotte. Yeah, that's true. I agree with you. Yeah, you know, I thought he was going to be. I thought he was going to go to Washington because of uh, Ron Rivera. You know, Ron and him were both you know good you know, teammates together, and the coach and the quarterback. But I guess Dan Snyder didn't want to pay that not pay that money. Yeah, well, uh, a lot of it has to do with, you know, uh, the virus and not being able, him not being accessible for teams to put him through individual workouts. So, you know, you're, you're putting a lot of money, a lot of, um, you know, eggs in one basket without having the peace of mind of knowing what he can, can't do. And uh, I'm sure that's a, that's got to be the reason, the, the main reason, um, and money as well, because I, I think even if, though he said – he would be a backup. He probably still wants smart, uh, smarter money. So we'll see what happens, Kirby. Exactly. Well, I got to give uh, credit for UConn Huskies. They signed a big uh, TV deal with uh, uh, CBS Sports Network four years for football and everything else. Do you think that's going to be helpful for UConn to still stay in the mainstream, even even in the Carolinas? You're killing me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think it will. And you know what else, too, Herbie? It's all about exposure when you play college football. Um, this is something the coaches can pitch. Um, and hopefully we can get some good recruits in there, get this program to where it needs to be. Um, so I'm hopeful things work out up in stores. Yeah, I hope so, too. And plus, uh, you, know, you know, I know UConn's now left to go. I think they're independent for football and then basketball in the back of the Big East. So that's right. that's a good thing. And they're a basketball school, just like Maryland and Duke. And, you know, it's not, you know, football is not their bread and butter. No, there's no question. But, you know, um, I will just remind you, we got creamed, but 
uh, Randy Edsel. Uh, he brought us to uh, a pretty prominent game uh, in the BCS number of years ago. So, you know, we've been down there before. We got Randy back, and uh, let's see what we can put together. You know, Herbie, sometimes you have to be – you have to take it in stages. And right, um, right now we want to be competitive – um, I think before you could take that step of learning how to win and, and beating big teams, we've got to learn how to compete. So we need better players. There's no question about it. Right. Well, we're waiting for uh, Jerry Ratcliffe to join us tonight. It's 7 to 8 here in two minutes. Hopefully he'll log into us on video. Um, you can also Twitter us anytime you want. You see us right here down here at the bottom here. It's Herbert Henry. That's the Twitter handle. We'll, we'll work on the Twitter handle for Yuski and Herbie uh, shortly. So, um, Yuski, what do you think about the uh, different ADs talking about football next year, you know, for this fall? You know, one of them said we're going to talk more about this with Jerry Ratcliffe and everybody else, but one of them said 35. The other one said maybe if the universities stay open, the Big 12 commissioner said we could play football even if there's nobody in, college, in on the campus. You know what, Herbie? Honestly, I think, uh, I think we're, football season is going to start on time. Uh, I believe, and and I'm certainly not a doctor and, and a scientist, but um, I believe we're, we're we're coming to the end. So um, I, I think everything's going off without a hitch. If there's a way, you know, I don't have to tell you, Herbie, but sports has a way of bringing people together. And I mm-hmm. and I know these guys are working as hard as they can on on finding a treatment for this. Um, I think it gets done, and I and I think there are stands. There are uh, fans in the stands this upcoming season. Your thoughts? Yeah, I agree with you. I think there is. But we have one guy who just logged into us. It's not Jerry Ratcliffe. It's our good friend Mike Burnup, who is always around Virginia Tech. Let's get him on right now because I know he worked really hard today working on the uh, live stream here. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Mike, are you there? There he is. There's Mike Burnup, the, uh, the the greatest tight end in, in Virginia Tech history who uh, does everything for Virginia Tech football and all that stuff. Mike, can you hear us? Mike, hit the microphone. Let me text him. So maybe he can hear uh, We can hear him. Mike, can you hear us? Now I can. There you are. Okay. There you go. Hey. How you doing, Mike? Thanks for coming on. How's the uh, how's the Blue Hit Blue Ridge Mountains? My my parents are down there right now at Mass and London. So how's everything going? So he can't hear you, but he can hear me. Is that right, Mike? I can hear you hmm. now. Yes. Okay. okay. How you doing? We are doing great, Mike. How before we get into football, Herbie? Can we work on the sound a little bit? I don't think he can hear you. Yeah, I'm working on that right now. Hold on. Okay. Mike, how is uh, how is everything with you and your family? First and foremost, before we get into football, how's everybody doing? Uh, everybody's doing fine. I think uh, everybody's getting a little bit bored and uh, tired of the situation, like most people around the country. But I think everybody understands how serious it is, and uh, they're willing to be patient and wait as uh, we try to move along slowly. Yeah, I was just telling Herbie that uh, that. Sports has a way of galvanizing not just the fans of our team, but our country. It's just something that's been in, embedded in us. And even more than I could ever be a fan, <laughs> we need football back. What are your thoughts on that, Mike? Well, there's no doubt. I mean, I think uh, it's a, it was a positive sign when the NFL released their schedule. I think that certainly was something to be uh, hopeful and grateful for because – Obviously, if they start on time, that uh, certainly bodes well for the college. But the problem is, you know, the NFL can get by with no people in the stands because of the TV deals that they have and the money, whereas colleges, I think, are struggling with that. And, you know, the way this virus goes around the country, it could be different different parts of the country. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the next month, two months. I think we'll know more about it. But, I mean, clearly these kids have got to get back to – trying to get themselves in playing shape and uh, you don't want to risk them, put them in uh, harm's way. So yeah, there's a lot to be thinking about and be concerned about. And as every day goes by and nothing happens, you know, you get more and more concerned if the season will start on time. Yeah. Coming into this season, Mike, obviously, uh, you know, big story, uh, and Herbie and I, you know, we're not as 
huge Virginia Tech fans as we are the character of Bud Foster. Big changes in Blacksburg. Tell us about what you foresee uh, this upcoming season, and in particular the big challenges for Virginia Tech uh, to get into the national spotlight this year. Well, I think the good thing is, guys, is that the Hokies have a lot of starters coming back, and that bodes really, really well for them. I mean, if you were trying to break in a quarterback now, no spring practice, it would be really difficult. So I think the experience that the Hokies have in coming back will certainly help them out tremendously. Um, you know, Bud Foster leaving obviously was certainly uh, of a concern uh, that, you know, they got new terminology, but a lot of the stuff on defense will be the same. And I think that's been the biggest drawback. You'd love to get those guys on the field in spring practice, get them used to the terminology and get them used to, uh, you know, the new things that they're going to do. So that's been the drawback. Offensively, you know, with Hendon Hooker being back and, you know, Quincy Patterson and, you know, I think uh, the receivers that you have coming back, the offensive line is back, your kicking game is back. I think the Hokies will be right there when it's all said and done if the season gets off like it's supposed to. I think they would be the likely pick to win the division. Uh, a lot of people will think maybe it's Carolina, maybe it's Miami. You know, Virginia losing Perkins is certainly something they've got to work out that. And, again, you know, no spring practice, no practice time. Who's You know, how's their quarterback going to be early in the season until they get the reps under their belt? So I think everything looks good for the Hokies, uh, barring injury. And uh, if they get started on time, I think it's a very positive situation. Mike, you know, you mentioned uh, Justin Hamilton. And, you know, I always say with the new coach, maybe new philosophy, a different terminology, what is what do you see with this guy? I mean, this is a pretty big promotion for him. What does he bring to the table? What does Justin Fuente see in him uh, to bring him up to, to this coordinator level? You know, I can remember when I uh, went around with food to some of the Hokie Club things, uh, when Justin just got on campus and – you know, we talked about, well, how did he come on the radar? You know, what did you hear about him? What made you like him and want to get him on board? And he said he was just so impressed with the way he handled himself. He met him a couple times along the trail. The fact that he had been at VMI and some other places and had been involved really at every level of, the, of coaching at the college level, from the weight room to recruiting to a coordinator. You know, and I think uh, – Everybody spoke very highly of him as a player at Virginia Tech, his willingness to play different positions, which he did. And he was a Bud Foster disciple. So a lot of the things that he is going to do will be the same. Now, again, we haven't seen spring practice and we haven't seen much. The terminology will have changed some. And the fact that he's got Daryl Tapp, you know, helping out on the defensive line is certainly big. A kid that's played in the NFL for many, many years, as Justin did. And, you know, kids nowadays all think they can play at that level. And so I think having those young guys there uh, is certainly a plus. And I think Justin will do a great job. You know, will he be able to make the the calls and the adjustments as fast as Bud Foster? You know, Bud was one of the best in the business at making halftime adjustments. And, you know, those are things that Justin's going to have to pick up, obviously, along the way. Yeah, Mike Burnup drop uh, joining us tonight. All things Virginia Tech. Uh, Mike, we just wanted to touch base with you a little bit tonight. Um, next time we're going to make uh, dive a little deeper. We're, I would love to hear about some freshmen coming in, some impact players. But now that we got this camera thing down, just wish you and your family uh, stay safe. And please give everyone uh, your Twitter handle. Yeah, it's just uh, real simple, at Mike Burnup VT. And uh, very simple. Um, I don't tweet as many as some people, uh, but I try to <laughs> – Get a little wildlife in there from the hood. You know, I had one today when uh, there was. I was. I came home real quick to pick up something at lunch, and I looked out in my backyard, and there's a deer just uh, eating the dandelions, which was great because I haven't sprayed yet. So that was perfect. And uh, had a squirrel out there, old Sammy. He was out there gathering some nuts. So it was all good in the hood today, guys. <laughs> Mike, thank you so much for joining us on the Herbie and You Ski Show. We'll talk to you very, very soon, my man. Keep following. Go Hokies. Sounds Thanks good. Hopefully get hooked up next time with both things. And tell my man Peter Cronin hello. <laughs> I will. <laughs> See you, Mike. All uh, right, y'all take care. You too, buddy. And that was Mike Burnup. Uh, he covers Virginia Tech football uh, for, I think it's been, gosh, at least a decade. Um, but we thank him. Herbie, how, how are yeah. you there? I'm fine. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. I don't know. I guess I have to be like uh, – 
Was it Johnny Carson? Attention, Kmart shoppers. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you get a chance to hear uh, what Mike and I talked about? Yeah. Okay. That's a very good point that we, you know, we were talking to, you know, about, you know, about Justin Hamilton and the way he came on the campus and what Justin Parte was there. And, you know, I just feel like Justin, you know, but here's my question. Justin wanted to go to Baylor at the end of the year. Baylor was calling him and saying, would you like to come to Waco? I'm wondering if everybody in Virginia Tech is like, okay, this guy is, is he going to stay around or is he going to be doing a, a, a Jimbo Fisher thing? Like, you know, I'm going to look for a better job and, you know, I'm going to stay here until somebody helps me out to get a, a better job. Well, I think he's, uh, you know, he's a man who, who just hasn't accomplished what he wanted to accomplish yet at Virginia Tech. I mean, he's made some strides there. They've got some really good players. And as Mike said, this year they have a, a ton of returning starters. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, the future looks bright. We'll, we'll see how they compete. But uh, I think we know who – it's obvious who the top dog is in the ACC. But – who can knock them off? Who can challenge them um, and really make a play uh, for the ACC championship? It remains to be seen. Well, I, th- I feel like the Coastal Division is up for grabs for anybody. Well, yeah, you, got, you got Georgia Tech that's going to have the second year of Coach Collins. You got Miami, who's basically with Diaz, and Diaz is on a hot seat because if he doesn't turn around, he's going to be looking for unemployment. You know, and then you got you know, Virginia Tech, who is basically they, you know. They lost to Virginia last year in the Commonwealth Cup at the last game of the year, so that's going to bad taste in their mouth because they want to, they want that cup to stay in Blacksburg, you know. And then you got other teams, you know, that's you know in the Coastal Division, in the Atlantic Division, it just seems like, yeah, you know, Clemson, and that's it, you know, right now, you know. Yeah, so you know, step up. That's what I'm. Absolutely. I mean, I think one of the frustrating things for us being uh, not only we cover the ACC, but us being fans is uh, the lack of, you know, close games down the stretch with Clemson. I mean, uh, you know, the other games, you know, that are close, they just don't have the uh, national spotlight. They don't have uh, the kind of impact on the polls, um, you know, and and seeding that, uh, you know, we always use this term, Herbie, and it's a uh, measuring right. stick. And uh, until someone stays within, besides Carolina, stays within 30 uh, mm-hmm. of Clemson, I, I think it's uh, it's hard it's hard to go up against that measuring stick sometime. Yeah, that's true. I agree with you. I mean, it's a hard, you know, going, yeah, but I feel, I feel like North Carolina has the upper hand, you know, to knock off Clemson because they got them into what? You know that two point conversion that they were supposed to do, and they lost. Nobody yeah. else last week got them until until LSU you know, ran them out of uh, you know, the Superdome. And you know Sam Howe coming back another uh, a year of experience underneath his belt. Um, I believe it was uh, thirty eight touchdowns, seven interceptions, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I mean the sky's the limit with this kid. He's a competitor. Uh, he's a leader, uh, and you know he he's. Uh, you know, he's putting it all together. So I'm anxious to see how he grows from year one to year two uh, with Mac Brown. And uh, I, I'd say that they would be the dark horse, certainly the probably the number two uh, team in terms of Las Vegas and odds to win the ACC championship. Yeah, so uh, Jerry is going to get on soon. He just forgot what time it was. Jerry Ratcliffe, so he'll be joining us shortly. So hopefully, uh, hopefully he can hear me. Yeah, so I may have to. Be a little more, you know, with my hand on my mouth. Can you hear me? (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, when Jerry comes on, just uh, introduce him, Herbie. But, uh, you know, I I was thinking that regardless, uh, you know, fans and universities, just the the new sense of normal that we'll have Mm -hmm. to come into after this is all over. But I tell you, this country needs football. Oh, yeah. They need football, and right now they need baseball. And we'll see. Use baseball as a guinea pig to see how this thing works. And yeah. It was a ninety-game schedule, and right. you know, uh, Universal DH, and you know, they only play. You know, the Braves are only going to stay on the East Coast, and don't have to play anybody except for the Mets and Yankees and Orioles and all that stuff. That's a good idea to keep the travel down. You know, but we'll see how that works. Yeah, I think so too, Herbie, and. Uh... Quite frankly, we're besides the last dance. There's really not much, uh, you know. 
I kind of wish the draft lasted a, a month uh, just so we could get our get something to, to sink our te- teeth into, you know. But uh, it is what it is. We'll get through it as a country. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we have uh, good leadership. Um, and uh, I'm confident we'll get through this together. Yeah. And, hey, one sports – there's actually a sporting event starting this weekend. It's NASCAR. Oh, hey, I love it. Hey, I'm, 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 I'm down here now. I'm not a guy, but I'm going to join in to see what this whole no fans in the, in, the, in the stand thing look like for NASCAR. I know that's called video game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But, hey, we'll see how that works. Yeah. So. Uh, Herbie, I was watching uh, some old Florida State footage of my old neighbor, Charlie Ward, and a uh, guy I had a chance to interview on the Tampa Bay Bucks, work done. What's it going to take to get these Seminoles back to national prominence, Herb? You know, another new face under the coaching realm. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see if, uh, you know, Mike Norville and how he does. And I can't wait for ACC kickoff if we have it because I'll be around that guy like like a fly to get to pick his brain and, you know, get to know him. But speaking of people picking brains, um, <laughs> this is a good segue. Uh, Jerry Ratcliffe, our good friend from, you know, Charlottesville in North Carolina, uh, Charlottesville, Virginia. Jerry, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine, Chris. Okay, cool. I think Mike had bad reception down there. I know you're in the Blue Ridge Mountains. I guess the internet is a little shady in, in uh, Blacksburg, or is it better in Charlottesville? Uh, I don't know about Blacksburg, but it's fine in Charlottesville. <laughs> I was just, yeah, so Jerry, Jerry's been writing for the, uh, the you know, Virginia Cavaliers for a very long time. He was started with the uh, Roanoke Times, and now you're doing your own uh, your own thing. So, uh, Jerry, what do you think about um, the first thing as we were reading this week? Uh, what about that new graduate transfer that came from St. Francis University, uh, Sean uh, or Sean Henry? What do you think about him? Uh, he's the third uh, transfer they've gotten so far during this recruiting blitz that they've been so successful in. Uh, Chris, they had uh, Ronnie Walker Jr., a former Hopewell running back who was at Indiana for two years. And he uh, transferred and has two years of eligibility remaining, but he might have to sit out a year unless he's um, given a waiver. And then they uh, got a, a really good quarterback, uh, uh, Keaton Thompson from Mississippi State, uh, who's a grad transfer, and he's eligible immediately. And he started uh, two games but played in 20 games for Mississippi State. So he's – going to be fighting for that starting job or at least uh, be a solid backup. And now the new kid, the receiver from St. Francis, um, don't know a lot about him except that he had a, a great career up there. Uh, I think last season he had, a season he had over 1,000 yards uh, receiving and um, has some experience. So uh, Virginia's got uh, uh, three or four guys coming back from last year that are stepping into starting roles. But uh, they need to be uh, to add some depth uh, in that receiving core, and, and this guy will should make an impact, I would think. Jerry, I'm curious. Uh, you know, Herbie and I we really enjoyed watching Bryce Perkins play last year. Um, I didn't really think he. I thought he should have been drafted sooner. But if there's anyone who knows his skill set. It's you. Um, how do you think his skill set will translate into the program? Uh, I think he's uh, was undervalued. And, you know, he thought he was going to get drafted by either the Rams or the Patriots. And uh, I can't remember. There was one other team he thought that might draft him. Uh, but he ended up signing as a free agent with the Rams. And they seem to be really happy to get him. Uh, I think he's – skill set is going to translate well into the NFL. He's, uh, even though he's a dual threat guy, and we know that sometimes those guys are hit and miss in the NFL. I, I think he's, uh, uh, I think he's a better fit because he, he developed into a better passer last season than, uh, than he had been. Uh, at times he was so hot. He, he was almost unstoppable. He would throw eight, nine, 10, consecutive passes, completions in a row. Uh, a lot of teams had a tough time with him when he when he did get hot like that. Uh, he's a big kid, and his dad played in the NFL. His brother 
is uh, for currently a free agent in the NFL. Paul Perkins was running back with the New York Giants. And his uncle is Don Perkins, who's in the Cowboys uh, ring of honor. So there's been a lot of history in that family in the NFL. And he's he's a big physical kid, but yet he's very fast. He runs, even though he's a quarterback, he actually runs the ball like a running back does. And so he's um, in two years, guys, he broke Virginia's all-time total offense record in, in just two seasons. So wow. Wow. And Virginia's had some pretty good quarterbacks over the years. So uh, I think he has the mentality and the work ethic that, that he'll make it in a Sean McVay offense where, you know, McVay is considered an offensive genius. So the fact that him and, and their offensive coordinator really like uh, the versatility of Perkins, I, I think they'll find ways to use him, maybe like the Saints did with Taysom Hill or, or some other aspects that we haven't seen in the NFL. But I I think he'll uh, I think he'll do well. I really do. Yeah. Well, Jerry, um, the, the Virginia president came out uh, a couple of days ago to talk about this whole football season. You know, he, you know, what do you, what's your take on this whole, you know, you know, you know COVID-19? Do you think we're going to start on time? Are we going to see you in Charlotte, you know, in July? What do, what do you think? Yeah, that's a good question. I think everybody's wondering about that. And you hear different things from different parts of the country, like California shutting everything down for another Three months. I know Alabama's already looking uh, at TCU for maybe replacing Southern Cal on their schedule. Um, I think I don't think anybody knows right now. I hear that the ACC holds almost daily conversations trying to figure this out. Um, a lot of people that I've talked to believe that the season may start in October rather than September, and which means you would do away with your non-conference games and play strictly a conference schedule. Uh, so there would be something to play for there at the end. Um, I think everybody is just trying to figure it out as we go along. And I, I thought the month of May would maybe be a big indicator and give us some kind of idea uh, uh-huh. once things start opening up. But uh, I think a lot of people are going to be watching Major League baseball plan to see what uh, what happens there before they jump to any conclusions. I, I don't know that we'll know anything until July as to whether we're going to see a normal opening of college football or, or a delay. And I wish, uh, I wish we all knew something a little more solid than that, but I, th- I think everybody's just guessing right now and playing it by ear. I totally agree with you. I think we all you know you're down in Virginia. Did the uh, governor uh, Norton did he lift the stay at home ban, or is it still is that still in the in effect down there? Uh, I think uh, this Friday uh, we're going to phase one, which I think you can get a haircut or you get your nails done, and <laughs> restaurants can uh, restaurants can uh, host people diners outside but not inside. Okay. Uh, and I think Northern Virginia, I think they're delaying the start up there because we've had more uh, COVID-19 cases there than the rest of the state. And then next week we move into a phase two, which opens up things a little bit more, and then a phase three. So wow. I think we're all uh, eager to get outside and do something starting Friday. I need a haircut. I haven't had a haircut. You and me this both, Jerry. I haven't shaved. I haven't shaved. I look like, I look like Glenn Campbell out of the uh, wilderness. <laughs> my mom's like my beard. Yeah. yeah, but can you sing? <laughs> I don't know. I play karaoke. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jerry, give us your t- Twitter handle. Where, where can people find your great work of Virginia football and basketball and all recruiting and all that stuff? Uh, it's simple. It's just at jerryratcliffe.com. And uh, and uh, if you go to jerryratcliffe.com, you can uh, find our website. It's free. It's uh, UVA-centric, but also uh, covers the ACC a little bit, uh, golf, running, and and health. So uh, we're trying to get it all covered. That's cool. And are you still doing your radio show down there? Yeah, we do. I have a weekly radio show every Saturday morning on ESPN Charlottesville, and uh, we usually have a, a lot of UVA stuff on there as well. And 
we we uh, podcast that, archive it on our website. So if you missed the live show, you can uh, go back and listen to it on our site. That's great. Well, Jerry, thank you so much. You and your family stay safe, and we'll see you uh, hopefully sometime this year in football. Hopefully sometime. Yeah, hopefully hopefully right. in a corona-free world, right? <laughs> Well, this is Jerry Ratcliffe from JerryRatcliffe.com joining us here on the Yuski and Herbie show on our on on StreamYard, uh, powered by StreamYard, and also on Herbert Fan Sports Radio. So, so you know, and that's really interesting from Jerry. You know, he he doesn't know he's been around the game so long since you know, he's old. He's older than us. Uh yeah. I don't. I mean, hey, we can speculate, but everyone's got their you know. Um, uh, the we're we're all anxious, but uh, I think I think we will truly appreciate the game more. How can we not after going through something like this? Oh, I agree. I think I think going through this whole thing, we're going to appreciate the athletes who give their blood, sweat, and tears. They're going to we're going to you know really enjoy the uh, the people who work in the stadiums. You know, like the ushers and all that stuff because they got to clean that place up like every night. And you know, with this stuff going on, they could get very sick from it yeah so you know it's, it's we've got to say thank you to everybody who's involved with everything in the stadiums and all that stuff even even the uh, organizations yeah you know herbie this is a, a complete reset of society sports uh everything that we have uh kind of just you know taken for granted honestly it's just a society and now I think we'll have uh, appreciation for it. I think we'll be more humble. I think, uh, you know, at the end of the day, when this is all over, um, you know, we'll we'll learn from it as Americans, as uh, we'll learn from it uh, globally as well. Oh, yeah. And I think we're going to – and plus we're going to look back at this like five, ten years from now going – Hey, you remember, remember sitting around the whole year of 2020 that we didn't have sports until October? And you'd be like, yeah, I remember that. These, these are things we're going to remember. And our kids, our grandkids, you know, our nieces, nephews are going to ask us questions about it. Because it's part of our now. This is part of our history of our country. Uh, no question, Herbie. And, uh, you know, we're I think this is a big shift in our nation, in the world. Um, I think that this virus will ultimately uh, unite us and uh, into, you know, hopefully it will open up more diplomatic relations between everyone in the world, because before anything, we need each other. We're, you know, humans before we're Americans or, uh, you know, any other country, we got to look out for each other. Oh yeah, we gotta look at you know, I gotta look after you. I know you're down down the way in Charlotte, but you know, it's okay. You know, but you gotta look for me up here in Baltimore and everybody surrounding your cousin, your brother who's down in Tampa. You know, because Tampa had more outbreaks of it you know, during the, during the month of March. You know, so you know, we all have to take care of everybody. No doubt, and I think it just comes down to uh, just a basic understanding of you know what people are going through the trauma they're facing and also you know being quarantined um i I think uh you know we're having things taken away from us that like i said before that you know hey going out to eat or just going to a sports bar watching some games having a brewski drinking some uh, eating some wings and i think we'll uh you know there's just going to be a deeper appreciation for all aspects of life after this and uh I'm, i'm just so uh so thankful, so ready to get it over with. I, I, I believe the worst is over, and I believe we're uh, going to come back with a vengeance uh, as a country, as a people as well. Yeah. Well, we're waiting for Pete uh, uh, Cohen, who is our good friend from uh, Boston College, to join us. I think he probably – he texted me last night that he all set, but he, he's a busy man, you know, former line, uh, part of the uh, – former Boston College uh, linebacker. So he was, he's been part of BC ever since uh, – BC was actually relevant back in the day of Doug Flutie and and all those people and you know he he was part of the first game between Notre Dame and Boston College because wow Boston- that is some great history and you know yeah. uh, Chestnut Hill's been starving for some competitive football ever since yeah uh, it's been a uh, kind of a, a hotbed of mediocrity 
there. But, you know, they not this past year, but the year before, A.J. Dillon made so many headlines. And I'm just interested to see, uh, you know, how he thinks uh, A.J. Dillon will will play and if he can make an impact. Because his last year wasn't as explosive or he didn't get – you know, the headlines, he didn't have those wow kind of runs. So he's got something to prove. Exactly. Yes, he does. He had, he, I think he was better when, when he was a freshman of the year than I think the last couple of years, because I think when he was a freshman of the year, nobody knew how to take him down. And I think everybody got adjusted to how to take AJ down. Yeah. uh, It's going to be interesting to see, but you know, Boston college, they've had, obviously, you know, they've had a, a really good, you know, offense and defensive line, but the skill positions, uh, you know, have been lacking. So, um, I, I, you know, I, I took a look at their freshman class coming in, and, and they looks like they have some uh, some special players coming in. But that's uh, well, we'll see, we'll see, because uh, you know, the ACC is uh, besides Clemson, it's uh, you know, it's a it's wide open. So especially right. when you look at the coastal seven different winners and seven consecutive seasons, I mean, that's unprecedented. I love the parody. I just want to see more teams challenge Clemson before they get to the college football playoff. Um, and we talked a little bit about, about it last week. I was completely shocked when Travis Etienne said he was going to come back bypassing millions of dollars. I thought he would be a first at, at, at I thought he would be a first round pick at worst early second, um, but you know, the guy comes back and, uh, Clemson's going to be, you know, they're going to be the mighty horse once again in the ACC. I just don't think, you know, anyone can understand their dominance. I don't think the numbers even show it. Um, but we'll see. Hey, that's why they play the games, right, Herbie? All right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I agree. That's what's, that's what ready to go. And that's how we're going to play the games. We're going to try to get our, we're trying to wait for Pete to join us, but we're going to get our friend George, um, who is from the Shakedown Thunder, to join us. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good, Herbie. How's uh, everything up in Baltimore? Big shout out to uh, all my Baltimore fans up there. <laughs> How many fans you got? <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> How many fans you got? Uh, I got one. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We should go around town. Like, do you know uh, Herbie? What? You know, like, like, like tonight show. <laughs> yeah, we should, Herbie. Well, hopefully, you'll be able to come down to Charlotte. Uh, our friends Charlotte. over at uh, the Wing Place are been asking about us, so we got to go down and. Uh, uh, cool. go on. That works. That works. Yeah, we're the. We're gonna. I hopefully, I'm gonna. When I go down to Charlie, I'm gonna drive down this time because I don't. I don't trust that mega bus with all the situations going on. <laughs> yeah. This, yeah. No. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you, buddy. It's, yeah, it sounds good. Yeah. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about what we uh, what we foresee, kind of a, along the college football landscape, Herbie. You know, and we can talk a little bit about the draft too. I was kind of disappointed, uh, Herbie, and a lot of talk down here in mm-hmm. Carolina was that. Um, we should have taken Isaiah Simmons, um, you know, at, at linebacker. And uh, instead we got the big uh, nose guard from uh, Auburn, which I got to tell you, I, I love that pick. I mean, he is going to stop the run. I mean, unprecedented. Matt Rule, every pick was a defensive player. So, you know, things that were stirring down here, we can't wait to see the Panthers get on. And I'm interested to hear, Herbie, if you believe that Teddy Bridgewater is the real deal for our Panthers. Well, I think Teddy Bridgewater, I think he's back fully healthy from his injury he had with, uh, you know, up there in Minnesota. And he was he was perfect when uh, Drew Brees went down. So, yeah, so I think he's ready to go. And I think going to Carolina, he's going to be the man. You know, and plus, you know, Carolina has a very young team and, you know, all that stuff. So, you know. Yeah, I think they're going to be okay next year. Plus, they got Matt Rule, who came from Baylor, who I had a chance to talk to when he was at Temple. You know, and he was a nobody. You know, I think he was one of the, I think he's one of Florida, one of the Gators that you know with uh, Urban Meyer or something like that. But hey, got to give him credit; he's now in the NFL. 
Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, when he first got hired, I would listen to the owner, David Tepper, and just talk about, you know, his character. So I, I really think that, you know, heading into this season, there's not a lot of expectations for the Panthers. You know, this is supposed to be a rebuilding year, rebuilding the franchise to um, to compete for, you know, not just division championships, uh, but, you know, to get into the playoffs and make some noise. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see uh, McCafferty and Bridgewater and see their dynamic. I mean, you got a player like Christian – uh, it just makes everything in the playbook so much easier to execute. Yeah. Well, we're going to bring in George here, our good friend uh, from Shakedown Thunder Sports. George Bashira will be joining us. Hold on one second. Let me bring him in. Uh, hey, George, is your video working? It should be. Okay. I see the. We got the uh, the Trevor Grove uh, logo like you had last week. <laughs> All right, Ewan. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Uh, hey, George, thanks so much for uh, for joining us. First, before we talk football, how are you and your family doing? How are things in your neck of the woods? Well, sorry that you guys can't see my video. I have no idea what's going on here. Um, actually, um, Jerry Radcliffe was talking about getting his hair cut. <laughs> yeah. I got mine cut today. <laughs> hey. um, I, I'll have to send you guys the picture. It looked like I was back in 1989 in my high school my high school yearbook. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Stranger things coming out, yeah. Oh, let me tell you, that's I I I felt for Jerry. I mean, I know sitting in that chair today, I was like, man, I feel much better. As a buddy of mine said, you got to get a win. You were saying that early earlier. You're just looking for that win. You know what I'm saying? The win is getting that haircut, getting past. It's like taking off the past and moving on with the with the future. So, all right. Well, George Bashira, joining us from the Shakedown Thunder Sports. George, uh, you know, I, I, I've been looking. Obviously, not much going on along any sports landscape right now. But you know, there seems to be a lot of uh, chatter about this guy, Will Shipley. Uh, you know, we often cover kids. Uh, um, you know, decommits, and then they visit one school, and then they give an oral commitment. I mean, all these – I mean, at the end of the day, they're kids, but why is there so much, you know, fallout? Why is there so much news about this recruit? I think I think that the guys were – the fans were upset because he was a five-star recruit. And it was once again, you know, a five-star um, putting a choice between Notre Dame and Clemson or one of the teams that's been to the championship in the last couple of years, and he goes in the other direction. So I just think, once again, I think it's people being let down with, um, you know, that five-star recruit not making that decision to go to Notre Dame. That's true. Yeah, yeah. it seems like Brian Kelly always messes, um, misses a five-star recruit, and everybody there in South Bend kind of upset at him. You know, it's, just, it's not Brian Kelly's fault. Yeah, it's just the way the kid is from North Carolina, and you know he wants to stay closer to, to home because Clemson is what an hour away. I said the exact same thing. Or yeah. said the exact same thing. Nowadays, I mean, think about this: if something goes down in the future, right? He's in South Bend, and he's got to go back to North Carolina. He's going to get on a plane, or he's got to drive twelve hours. If he stays, if he goes to, into South, goes into Clemson in South Carolina. It's a win. It's an automatic win for him. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, George, I was doing some research last night. Did you know that Notre Dame hasn't lost a home game since 2017? We don't talk about that. Okay. <laughs> okay. I understand. <laughs> I'm a thorough believer in the jinxes, the sports jinx. So, thanks a lot, Herb. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, we don't know we're going to be playing this year. So, you know, it could wipe away the, the slate by the time October starts. Yep, yep. You know, George, we talked about Shipley, but give, you know, Notre Dame has just a huge following. Paint a picture for us. Give us a couple of freshmen that are coming in uh, that are going to make an impact for the Irish or who can make an impact for the Irish this year. Oh, wow. There's a there's a boatload of them. Um, you had the kid from Germany. I believe his name was Eichenberg. He was uh, he was a recruit out of Germany. 
and a big defensive guy. So, um, you know, he's, he's definitely um, going to make an impact. And, and actually, Coach Kelly was uh, talking about that earlier this week. Um, I was reading a couple interviews that he had done. It says, this year again, another couple true freshmen are going to make an impact on this program. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 my name, the names are dropping, you know, off my head right now. But you got that the running back that's coming in as well, a true, a true freshman running back. But um, it's it's definitely going to be another one of those seasons where, like with Hamilton, he came in and made a big impact on defense. And um, you know, it's going to be another one of those seasons where they got these these freshmen that are going to want to step out and, and make a big impression. That's true. Well, let's look at the schedule coming up here, uh, George. You know, you guys have to go travel to Dublin, and that game is actually going to be start you know, on time. Or, you know, what do you think if that game gets canceled? Where do you think that game is going to be moved to? Because I know is that a Notre Dame home game or is that a Navy home game? That's a Navy home game. Okay. So, so um, go ahead. So, where do you think they're going to move it to if they can't do it in Dublin? Yeah. You know, I- I don't know. I mean, I think that the Naval Academy Stadium <laughs> it doesn't I think doesn't sit sit that many people, so they won't be playing there. Um, who knows? It's a there's a whole bunch of different venues, you know, and, and you're talking about a, a, a season that starts a week before everybody else too. So I heard you guys talking earlier with Gary, you know. Their 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 practice has got to start sooner than these other teams, right? And I think uh, I think uh, Brian Kelly said if you can get people in by July first, you can actually have a good six weeks of practice and you're ready to go. He did say that on the Scott Van Pelt show. Yeah. Um, he, he he did talk about that because of all the all the um, conditioning and all the other activities that got to get in place, you know, before they can. Uh, you know, even consider being ready. So he said July 1st. I I think that the date, I think the date's going to come sooner. Mm-hmm. I, I personally feel it's, it's going to come sooner than they're going to say that if we don't get there probably by mid-June, I, I think, you know, that I think the season's going to start somewhat later anyway. Hey, George, let me ask you, you know, obviously I, I mentioned the following uh, nationwide. This team is just beloved. Um, what, but I, I'd like you to encapsulate something from the time Brian Kelly got here to, you know, the playoff appearance last year, how would you assess his performance as head coach of the Irish thus far? And what are expectations? What are fair expectations this year for the Irish? Well, well, first of all, I mean, I've been covering the Irish football. This will be my third season. Um, so I came in on two seasons ago, just after they had come off the, um, the loss to Clemson. Now I was covering them during the Clemson. Um, it was the year, it was a couple, it was just after when they, um, I'm sorry, when they had just lost, they had the horrible season. They held one four. they had four win season. And I think that his persona around the team has completely changed. Mm-hmm. Um, I've yeah. seen him. Uh, this is a, once again, just a personal perception. Um, he's, he's more, he's trying to be more comfortable around the players and he, he's taken on more of than a coach role. He's taken on like a father role to these kids. And you, you see, that's working with a lot of the different programs. Clemson has, is using that formula. And there's a couple other programs that, Hey, they're just not guys that show up to practice. These, these are where you have to build the relationships, like any, any type of, relationship you got to build whether it's inside work or outside of work you just can't have the relationship on the field it's got to be the relationship off the field because that's that's where you win your games in my opinion well i totally agree with you and you know you got to win you know i think i see a difference in brian kelly last year like you said he's more a father figure than a couple of years ago when you know you got yeah you guys were three and nine i think it's, we were there for the miami game you know, back in, you know, it was back in September when Miami was struggling with first year for Mark Rick. You know, yeah. and I can see I can see a difference between that game and now. They're more, they're well, you know, they're well, edu- you know, not educated, but they're working together as a team and they're working very well. And last year they're doing, they did pretty well on the road too when 
Notre Dame is not really a good road team. Um, I'll be honest with you. This last year was was kind of a surprise how the season how the season ended up. Um, you go you first your your first big road games against Georgia, you know, early in the season. That's a that's a tough place to go in to play for anybody. And they played tough in that game. You know, they came up short, but they played really tough. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and we won't we won't talk about Michigan because you guys talked to me about Michigan, <laughs> and we were looking past Michigan in that game. So I will forever remember that interview. Um, but um, I think I think it, it's the seeds of the players too. When I had interviewed the players after the Clemson game. The, no, you guys have probably seen it in the locker room. There's nothing like going into the locker room and seeing the true emotion, right? Of, of the guys coming off the field that there's something they tried hard for all season. They planted the seed that they passed on to Team 131 last season, and Team 131 planted that same seed for Team 132. Okay. So I think there's that building of, you know what, we're going to go out and give it all. It's not that we're not giving it our all. But we're gonna go and we're gonna we're gonna show these people these people that with our chip on our shoulder that we can win. And and I and I think that's where this program is truly turning around. It, it, it's 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 just not a physical game, it's a mental game. And right. you can't have one without the other. So having these two parts of the game come together is huge, um, in my opinion, for the program. Yeah. Well, George, real quick, if I let you go, next year's this year's schedule. What game do you want to go to? I think the uh, the game in Wisconsin at the at Lambeau Field. I think that's going to be a fantastic game between uh, Wisconsin and Notre Dame. Lambeau is a bucket list stadium to visit. I think for anybody, right? Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, if things go right, I will be at Lambeau. Um, I will be at Heinz Field. Um, those are the two big road games right now for me. And, um, of course, covering the home game against Clemson is going to be huge as well. Right, exactly. Well, George, give everybody your handle. Uh, where, where can they find you and you know, your great coverage of Notre Dame's football? And you do a good job with hockey as well and basketball. Yeah. Um, basketball was kind of I – was, I was kind of hoping to get on with you guys and talk about the craziness of men's basketball. Um, that was just that was just crazy. But uh, – I'm on Twitter at Shakedown the Thunder Sports, uh, on Instagram with the same handle, and um, I also have a Facebook page, Shakedown the Thunder Sports, and my blog is www.shakedownthethundersports.com. All right, folks, that's our good friend George uh, Rashera from Shakedown Thunder uh, Shakedown Thunder Sports. George, thanks for joining us, and you and your family be safe, and uh, send us your photograph of your 1989 haircut. We'd like to see it. Absolutely, Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. All right, buddy. Thanks for coming right. on. Well, uh, you and I, I guess uh, Pete was uh, got, you know, Pete Cohen got, you know, whatever he's doing. But we'll get him on another time before the yeah. season starts. But, uh, you know, what's your thoughts about Notre Dame? I think it's pretty good. I think he had good insights in Notre Dame with this Will Shipley thing. Well, you know, Herbie, we always talk about college football as a game of emotions. And, you know, what our friend just said was very enlightening about the family kind of atmosphere. You know, I, I remember uh, a lot of talk the last couple of years where that, you know, uh, Alabama's the business school, Clemson's the family school in terms of, uh, you know, how the coach kind of integrates himself with the players. So it was really interesting to hear uh, him say about Brian Kelly and that facet kind of coming together even more so this year. Hopefully it'll translate into better play, more consistent play, um, and, and a different kind of cohesiveness. So that, that's really going to be interesting to see how that develops. Yeah, I think I'll be great. And I think also that game in the, in the, at Lambeau Field, that's in October. And does, does it get cold in Green Bay? Just like, uh, like, uh, <laughs> just like South Bend? Oh my goodness, man! I don't. I hope. I, I'm not sure when they uh, when they they open up there. Correct. So I, I think. think well, they don't. If they play, if because they're independent, if we don't start till October, that could be the yeah. first game of the year for everybody. Oh wow! Yeah. So that would. Well, we'll we'll have to see how things uh, pan out. But you know, there's uh, there's not a ton of college football fans 
uh, that can outdo Irish fans. They're just as passionate, uh, competitive, and yearning for their team to get back in the college football playoff than, than any other, you know, uh, university around. So let's see if it can equate. Because it seems like we say the same thing every year. Oh, you know, Brian Kelly's on the hot seat. Expectations. Well, when you go to a school like that, and quite frankly, the early success sometimes can be your detriment, you know, uh, later on down the road, Herbie. We talk about it all the time. So expectations certainly big this year, as they always are in South Bend. Yeah. Well, I think next week, dude, we also are going to cover the Big Ten as well. So I guess you want to go in a little bit with the Big Ten and talk to some people from Penn State and Ohio State and see how, they, uh, how they're how they doing and what do you think about those two. Those are the two schools that are going to fight for Big Ten championship because I don't think anybody – I don't think Maryland has the uh, the firepower yet, and I think Rutgers is hoping that they can actually get some wins because they got Greg, uh, your, old, your old Buccaneers coach. Yeah, you know, back there for the second yeah. time. Yeah. Well, uh, hey, you know, the Big Ten, uh, um, we always talk about uh, the importance of conference strength just on a national stage uh, in terms of rankings, uh, you know, seedings, even with the college football playoff, strength of schedule, that kind of thing. So, you know, normally people say SEC, ACC, Big Ten, but uh, we'll have to see. I think there's a, a little bit more parity in the Big Ten. I think their teams are a little bit more competitive instead of just one dominant team that we have. You mentioned, uh, you know, Penn State, Ohio State. Um, so we'll have to see how things uh, how things shake out. Exactly. Well, folks, thanks for joining us tonight on our live broadcast. We're going to do this again next Wednesday night because we really have nothing going on in our world of sports. So we're going <laughs> to <laughs> we're going to be your uh, we're going to be your guy for. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get better. We're gonna go in depth to UConn, maybe. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk Big Ten uh, football next week with some people from Penn State, Ohio State, the people we know, and we'll see how they're doing. And Penn State right now, I feel like they're going to be the uh, the one in the clubhouse if Ohio State doesn't get them. You know, Ohio State's still number one in the Big Ten, but you got Penn State right there. Yeah, I, I think it's a, a battle of two, but we'll see. Hey. What, you know, that's what makes uh, college football great, the dark horses, the great stories, the smaller schools, the uh, David against Goliath. So the country needs football. The world needs football. Everybody stay safe. Exactly. Well, folks, if you want to send us a uh, Twitter handle, Twitter message, you can go to my Twitter page. It's at Herb FM Sports Radio. It's just, uh, it's just Herb FM on uh, Twitter. And then uh, if you want to send us an email, it's Herb FM Sports Radio at gmail.com if you have any questions about tonight's program or if you want to know what kind of, you know, what you and likes to eat for dinner, you know, <laughs> we'll do something. <laughs> everything? Hey, we're open for anything here. <laughs> you and Herbie. Oh, Herbie, I love you. Buddy. All right, buddy. You stay safe down in Charlotte, and I'll do the same here in uh, Baltimore. Absolutely, All right, buddy. Later, all.